Hello and welcome to Miniage Painting. Today I have something special for you all. We will paint this model called an Atlas Shredder from the sculptor known as Mini Monster Mayhem. I have supported this Patreon for quite some time and wanted to paint something for the channel. Without further ado, let's paint this amazing print. We will start this off by base coating the shredder with my airbrush. You don't have to use an airbrush for this, but I'm going to use it to speed up this painting and get clean, solid coverage. The base coat is going to be gracier, as this color works perfectly for contrast paints. The main color that we will use is Leviathan Blue. We can apply this using the airbrush without any dilution. Once again, I'm using the airbrush because I want the solid coverage that the airbrush gives without leaving pools of color that might be left behind by applying the color with a normal brush. That said, I will switch to a normal brush later for the details. Garchomp has four main colors, a dark blue body, a golden star on his nose and the base of his tail, he has white spikes and claws, and finally a dark red underbelly. This last one is the color we will now apply in corn red. The airbrush will work wonderfully for this as we apply it to the underbelly and the underside of his neck. We're going to use yellow instead of gold. I'm making this choice because yellow feels more natural for a living creature than gold inlaid into its body. The first color for this effect is Averland Sunset. With the base colors down, we can move on to using a traditional brush. First, we need to clean up the area around the nose. To do this, we'll take some gray sear and apply it to all the details that I want to bring back into the Leviathan blue. With two coats of gray sear down on the nose, we can take the Leviathan blue and apply this over the gray sear. Similarly with the gray, we will need two or even three coats of blue to get a solid color that matches the rest of the model. We can finally work on some highlights on the body. I'm going to take some Alatioc Blue and apply this in almost a glaze consistency to all the bumps and the high points of all the scales. There are a lot of these, so I'll skip ahead to when I have most of them painted. As I said, this is what it looks like after an hour and a half of painting these details. I wanted to do exactly half of them in order to give you a quick look at the amount of detail that this guy has. Anyway, I'm going to get back to painting these details. See you in a bit. Now that we've got those details down, let's do some shading. We're going to start with Cassandora Yellow to shade all of the yellows. This will be great for the darker parts of the yellow and make the highlights that I apply later pop. With that drying, let's shade the red. To do this, I'm going to use Karoberg Crimson. Similar to the yellow, this will give a ton of detail to the shadows and make the next color we apply here pop off the model. Let's highlight that yellow now. We'll start with Uriel Yellow and add this to the nose in some streaks starting in somewhat random lengths while making sure to leave the shaded color at the edges. Flipping the model over, we can highlight the red by taking Wazdeka Red and applying this as an edge highlight to the sharp edges that run across the body. For a final highlight on the nose, let's apply Flash Gets Yellow in the same way as the Uriel Yellow but covering less space. We want to have that previous yellow be a gradient stepping stone into this brighter yellow. 
Let's start with those eyes. Garchomp has a yellow iris with black pupils and sclera. Yellow is extremely difficult to apply over black, so we're going to start with yellow. To get a solid yellow, I'll use a base coat of Grey Seer. While waiting for the gray to dry, we can start doing the white of the spikes using Ceramite White. Ceramite White is a decent base paint, but white is always a nightmare to get a solid coat. White requires patience because if you apply a new coat before the previous one is fully dry, you'll end up with a chalky consistency. While we wait for the white to dry, we can add yellow to the eyes. I will use this pretty awesome contrast paint called Bad Moon Yellow. It's one of the newer GW contrast paints, and one of the better ones they have. We're going to coat the whole of the eye with this color. With that done, we can check where the eyes should be pointing, and then dot them appropriately with a bat in black. After dotting, we can then paint the black sclera of the eye as a circle around the yellow iris. With that, we are finished with the body and can move on to the base. For the base, I start by quickly spraying it black with more abaddon. This is so I can get some nice natural shadows for the rocks as we are going to paint this with a couple of dry brushes. Starting with a rather heavy dry brush of Eshin Grey, we can start to build up the darker recesses of the rocks. This is a good first start, because we can go as heavy as we want with these rocks, though we still want to leave some of that black behind. For the mid-tone, we want to take Mechanica Standard Grey, and do a slightly lighter dry brush across the rocks. It's at this point that the rocks really start to look like mountains. For a final highlighting dry brush, we'll take Dawn Stone and apply this lightly to the tops and outermost stones of the base. With the base completed, we can take a final look at this beast with a grand reveal. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope to do more videos like this, where I take some highly detailed prints and paint them for you all. Let me know in the comments which other prints you would like to see.